Welcome to the FlowerSchool.com video library. I'm Leanne Kessler, director of the Floral Design Institute, and today I'm here to share with you a fun Easter centerpiece. Easter is just around the corner, one of my personal favorite holidays. I always have all the family over for a big Easter dinner and an Easter egg hunt. Of course, it's raining in Portland, but we'll ignore that and just have fun. And today I want to share with you a centerpiece that's probably quite similar to the one I'll be making for my family dinner. For flowers, I've chosen gorgeous radiant orchid colors, roses, carnations, gerberas, but that's later, so I set that aside. First, I've got to prep the container. I'm using an Oasis wreath ring. It's fully saturated with flower food and water. I drained it out so it didn't spill when I picked it up, but it's all wet, ready to go. And I want to cover that. The fastest, easiest, is to use foliage. A big aspidistra leaf covers easily. You just kind of cut it, set it in, then take another leaf, give it a cut, and then take your first leaf, wrap it around, and then insert through. Then taking another leaf, giving it a cut, wrapping it around, and inserting through. Now I've got this last one that I need to bring around. I can either pin it into place with a wire, or I like to use another type of foliage. And for this, I'm going to use a little bit of aspidist, or excuse me, spring awry, asparagus fern. Bring it around, overlapping, and then once again, inserting the leaf into the foam, and then wrapping. You can see how easy it is to cover your foam quickly and easily. You repeat that with another spring awry, and then you're ready to design. So now that the sides are covered, you still have to worry about the front and the interior. So taking a little bit more, another leaf cutting it, you can actually fold over and down, insert it through, and then bring this around and into the interior and another. Folding it down and around and on into the inside again. Then I go back and I start adding flowers with the carnations, fluffing them out so they're nice and full, giving it a cut don't need them real long. And once again, I could take and fold it in. And if the stem isn't strong enough, take your knife and give it a cut. And then insert through the leaf down into the foam. Another. And sometimes you can just place them straight down in. They go just fine without a piercing of the leaf. Other times you think, oh, I don't know if I can get that. I better pierce it. You just kind of experiment, tucking them. Maybe doing a couple close together, fluffing them out. I'm doing the carnations first because they're so bright and happy and relatively inexpensive. So they give me good coverage without a lot of expense. And then I can go back in and tuck in a little bit more expensive blossoms until it's fully covered. Now I have some gorgeous roses to tuck in. So I take them out. They have guard petals on them. I like to leave them. I like that wonderful green and purple, so I'm not going to take those off. If they were really ratty looking, I would remove them. But I think they're just kind of fun. Bring it in towards the front and up over the top. And again, just piercing through the leaves. I'm working my way around. Another one up through the top. Doesn't want to go through, so piercing the leaf with my knife and then adding it in. And 
And maybe one more right up over onto this side. So I filled most of my flowers on this side so that you could see while I was working. So when I turn it, you see I have a bald spot right here. And I saved that for the Gerber daisies. So I can give them a cut and insert them just like I did everything else. Their stems are a little more fragile, so giving it a definite pierce with the knife and then setting it down in, tucking it nice and low into the water reservoir. Then another, again giving it a cut, and then nice and low. And the last one, bring it right over here, tucking it in. So that makes that side just a little bit different, so that when you look at it from different areas, it's not identical. I like it to be a little more asymmetrical, even though it's an all-sided centerpiece. Then lastly, a little bit of baby's breath. It's like the whipped cream on the pie. I love to add just a little bit, tuck it in, it brightens, adds some fluff, and it just seems so totally appropriate for Easter to have fluffiness. And just like me with my desserts, I always, always, always have whipped cream. So just a little bit of baby's breath for the whipped cream. As you finish, you want to look for any bare spots. Maybe tuck in a tiny bit more baby's breath. And then turn it, double checking that it looks good from all sides. And then, what would Easter be without Easter eggs? So gathering some plastic eggs and just tucking them into the center. Pushing them in, maybe a green one, another purple one, another pink one, and of course, the golden egg. I always loved finding the golden egg on the Easter egg hunts. It was like such a joy. It's all just too much fun. Flowers, whipped cream baby's breath, and Easter eggs, and you're ready to go. Are you ready for Easter? You still have a little bit of time. If you need more creative inspiration or to find the supplies to create your own design, follow us on the website at flowerschool.com. Or if it's easier, just pick up the telephone and give us a call at 1-800-819-8089. And of course, as I always ask, take a picture and send it to me so I can see what you were inspired to create for your Easter centerpiece. You can use my personal email. It's Leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. Now it's your turn. Have fun and do something you love.